Howdy, folks. Welcome to Retsy Talk, episode 36. Beef, how's it going? Hey, it's going all right. And we have a first-time guest here with us, uh, a <laughs> Western Tiger fella? Uh, yes, thank you. Such? Western Tiger here, long-time listener, first-time caller. Oh, hey, welcome to the show. <laughs> it's a pleasure to be here. You get, Excellent. get my name right. My publicist told me I was here for marketing and branding awareness purposes, and I will not take kindly to this level of disrespect. Northern Lion, is it? That is correct. Oh, except Northern okay. Loin as well, because it just feels okay. good where it counts. So your body's really weird looking? Exactly, yeah. The crotch yeah. on the head, and then you don't even want to know it's in my crotch. It's like a portal somewhere. All, well, there all, goes my first question. All coppices in Vancouver to <laughs> point to your crotch. That's how you orient yourself. It's excellent. I pay good money for that privilege. <laughs> so, Northern Lion, first question... Have you set the Guinness World Record for parts in a Let's Play yet? Uh, I, I don't know about that. That's actually, I know it's half tongue-in-cheek, but that's a legitimate question I get sometimes from people that are like, <laughs> like, do you actually hold the record? Like, you got to hold the record. And uh, I, I've seen some Minecraft Let's Plays that are, you know, over a thousand parts. So with, with Binding of Isaac being like 620-something, I've still got a long way to go. I'll probably never catch up. Well, I mean, would you want to? Yes, that's my okay. sole reason for uh, for still doing what I do is I want to. I want people to remember me, talk about mm -hmm. me after I'm gone. Right, and that's the thing you want on your tombstone is like made it to episode one thousand three hundred twenty six. Yeah, yeah, exclusively. You know, In fact, I might just I, make sure that's on my tombstone and just end no, that'll it all. be the dates on your tombstone, <laughs> the date you joined YouTube, and the date of your last <laughs> finding of Isaac. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I said this wasn't going to be like a nail you to the wall kind of show. Oh, or shit. Take it, but I got to ask you the tough question. Okay. B mm -hmm. Binding of Isaac, episode 317. <laughs> you, you fucking pass up Polyphemus for the Book of Revelation. Oh, man. And you, like, how could you do that fucking 300 episodes in? Are you fucking nuts? I can tell you're fucking with me post. because Polyphemus is a passive upgrade, whereas Book of Revelations oh! is uh, something that you get, you actually have to hold actively. So. I, I call you out as a fraud, slow beef. <laughs> but I do get comments that are like that on a, a very regular basis. Or, <laughs> occasionally I'll get like a tweet, and this this Let's Play's been going on for like almost two years, like fully two years at this point. People will be like, in episode 151, did you know that you missed a key on this level? And I'm like, oh, are let you, me go back into the fucking archives. if you're going to recall that off the top of your yeah. head. <laughs> are, you, are you fucking serious? Yes. People ask that. And well, I, let me check the transcript. I feel bad because I have to like pull back the curtain and be like, okay, just between you and me, like as soon as the episode is finished, it is like divested from memory, and I, I don't even. I'm in like in a trance. Like I wake up after the video and I'm, I don't remember what I said. Then people come to me later and they're like, that was really funny what you said there. And I'm like, oh, I don't remember. <laughs> how did um? How did you start? Like, well, let me put it this way. Let's say I wanted to. I'm I'm new to the Northern Lion brand. Yeah. The product. And I see these Binding of Isaac. Do you want me to start at episode one and watch all of them? Or can I just jump right in to 694 or whatever the fuck you're up to? I think you should start at uh, episode 200. 200. <laughs> That's where it gets really good. No, it, it actually, it, it doesn't matter. It's meant to be kind of like, uh, you know, not to be a little mm -hmm. bit self-aggrandizing, but it's something like The Daily Show or like a nightly Talk like a late night show or something that you can just watch whenever you want. Like you, I don't know how many and people you make fun out there. of politics. Exactly, we we tackle some yeah. hard hitting issues. Like it, yeah. unless you're the kind of person that like DVRs shows like The Price Is Right and like you, <laughs> I, I need to see the narrative change in The Price Is Right episode to episode. It doesn't matter if you miss like one or two hundred. You can start whenever you, you want. And um, do you do them live now and then post the recordings is the idea or? Yeah, yeah, they're yeah. Uh, they're all entirely done with live commentary and then posted usually a couple of days later. Do you have guests? Uh, I have done a couple of collaborative uh, collaborative videos, but I don't know how many I've done on my own channel. Most of it, like probably, actually, I think all of the like six hundred and some canonical episodes are are just me. <laughs> I'm just trying to make sure that everything's segmented and and categorized properly so that. <laughs> He's going to stay the Northern Lion show. Exactly. Northern, okay. The Northern Lion B.O.I. <laughs> canon. Mm -hmm. So just so the scholars know, like, long after I'm gone, how to study this kind of stuff. So the thing I talked about where you passed up Polyphemus for the book, that's Extended Universe. Yeah, that, that would be like a Northern Lion fan fiction, probably. Gotcha. Like, in, Does in that the, exist? Uh, almost certainly, yeah. Uh, oh, you haven't looked? Uh, one of my friends does, like, a kind of random type stream where he reads fan fictions that he gets and i think there has been no. one where like he and i fucked but that's as far <laughs> as i know i don't know if there's ever been any like like me and isaac start making out or something like that or 
Let's hope not. If it doesn't exist, that would be. Uh, it will exist after the this airs. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah. Surely, I, I think I'll write it. Actually, <laughs> it's already on the Wikitubia page. <laughs> I would write it if it didn't get me arrested. That would be um, so great if Wikitubia actually worked. Like it, it was like an "Are You Afraid of the Dark?" episode where something would appear there and I could read it, and then it would happen in my actual life. I think that there's a creepy pasta about that. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> that's getting way too meta for me to handle. <laughs> Um, <laughs> this it's like, you know it's funny I did I did my homework meaning that five minutes before we talked I looked at your Wikitubia page yeah, here, me too no, your YouTube Wikipedia page yeah this is fucking creepy the shit they have mm -hmm. on you <laughs> it is a little frightening uh, you you are five feet ten inches tall that's correct yes uh, I like how you're asking me to confirm this so there's like <laughs> Wikitubia well, Illuminati right now are gonna listen to this well you'll and... note that there are no citations provided on the <laughs> oh, Wikitubia article and now I, there will be I'm actually gonna disagree with you Diabetes uh, number 17 about his height is apparently confirmed as citation number 17 <laughs> I'm not making that up 17? yes yes it's it's uh, this YouTube video at 51 minutes flat apparently I guess you talk about your height and boom there you go <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, this is creepy. They're going to have your fucking blood type, and then once insurance companies come into this, wow. It's going to be weird because if my blood type shows up there, that'll be when I get really suspicious because I don't know my blood type off the top of my head. <laughs> so it's something I don't think I'd mention in a video, and then I'd be like, okay, someone on the inside. Like, there's a mole in my operation. <laughs> Some fan's doing a mental yeah. chart somewhere. 75% <laughs> like, says be positive. I know it! Yeah, they're just yeah. going to, like, open records of genealogical studies and, like, piecing together my ancestry. <laughs> wow. Yeah, this is creepy. I'm very glad there is no Retsu Prey wiki page now. Well, let's start um, asking the personal questions about you guys, so we'll figure it okay. out. Okay. Yeah. Hey, if you like, you know, like, but um, <laughs> I have nothing interesting about me at all. We're blank slates. Basically. That's good. You, you have to be a, as figureheads of a, a part of the industry, right? You guys represent a movement. The industry? That's what we are. Yeah, figureheads. He said it. <laughs> Which means I could put it on my resume. Adding a citation there. <laughs> Do you guys have your own Wikitubia pages? I'm sorry, say again? Do you guys have your own Wikitubia pages? Because I can arrange uh, someone setting them up if you're interested. <laughs> I don't... I don't think we do. I'm, I mean, I looked as for, far as I know. I looked up uh, YouTube Wiki uh, uh, Red to Prey. There is nothing. Let me try Slow uh, Beef. There's a TV Tropes oh, page no. on Slow Beef. That I've seen. Yeah. I've seen the TV Trope stuff, yeah. Yeah. Which is, you know, the premium for <laughs> finding out. I mean, everything Red to Prey does is founded off things you find on television. Um, so it makes sense that we'd be there. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> it's much harder to do a search for diabetes, though. Yeah. Fucking Wilfred Brimley. That's the beauty of it. What a fool. <laughs> what about, I, I do look just like him, though. Here's, here's a good search result. Diabetes from the Angry German Kid Wiki. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if I want to go any further into that. Look, I do some moonlighting. I don't want to talk about it. I'm pretty sure Angry German Kid did a Minecraft Let's Play. And it's on episode 800 now that I think about it. Yeah, he's, he's the next person I have to pass on the list. It's like... <laughs> Cal Ripken Jr. trying to get his Iron Man record. I don't know anything about sports. You're a <laughs> German kid. <laughs> you're, you're fucked, by the way, when it comes to those Minecraft. They are kicking that oh shit my out. God. Boy. Two or three videos a day. Mods come out all the time. It's nuts. Oh, man. And those mods are sexy. I don't know if you've seen some of them. There's a girlfriend mod now. Wait, really? Be yes. Yo. I got to get me some of that. No, I don't know. That you <laughs> Check Minecraft oh. episode 769. <laughs> You'll find it there. 69, am I right? Uh huh. That's, mm -hmm. that's a Northern Lion classic joke right there. Oh, hey. Mm. I, I told you we did our homework. I'm a little frightened. Maybe you're the guy who wrote the Wikitubia page. <laughs> Shh. I'm, I'm so lazy as to think. <laughs> uh, let me ask you this. Okay. Um, this is the joke I wanted to open with. So you know it's going to be funny. No. Um, you did, you did the uh, co-optional podcast with Total Biscuit, um, uh, Jesse Cox, and Dodger. Correct. Three three hours mm -hmm. uh, on camera. And now you're doing Retsu Talk. Yes. Uh, what is wrong with your agent? <laughs> <laughs> like, you have, this is the biggest step down I've ever seen. I was told that I would be on Good Morning America, and I'd try to, like, bring some legitimacy to YouTube Let's Playing. Oh. And uh, mm -hmm. then here I am. I don't know. It is. It's like House of Cards. I had a bender one night and then just woke up and here I am in the scraping the bottom of the barrel and being scraped as well. 
Uh, you know, I, I didn't realize we were spoiling House of Cards for people on this podcast. Thanks a lot. Wow. Oh, that's only like 85% of the way through the only season. Well, yeah. That's a good point. Now check out this Let's Play. <laughs> was, that, was that your Kevin Spacey? I mean, it was excellent. Don't get me wrong. Oh, boy. I am Kevin Spacey. All right, let's just hang up on diabetes now. Um, <laughs> Wikitubia, is Kevin Spacey? Well, this angry German kid doesn't know. That's pretty good. <laughs> don't, Thank don't you encourage. for humoring me. I don't it encourage It might this. be the best Kevin Spacey impression I've ever heard. It might actually be better than Kevin Spacey. You Do might you hear actually them be Kevin Spacey. Yeah, you get on Wikitubia. Diabetes mm-hmm. is Kevin Spacey, citation one. Holy shit. <laughs> This, the whole this podcast, t- 10, 50, 10 minutes, 54 <laughs> seconds, bang. Um, yeah, that was the only thing I had, even though it's an agenda. That was the, I when, I, when I saw it on the agenda, I thought there were going to be legitimate questions about the co-optional podcast, and I was going to say, you know, it was a pleasure and an honor to be on it, but instead it was just, it was just a joke. No, you don't have to lie, it's okay. And, then, <laughs> and now we both it's, feel worse, because you, you said my agent sucks, and now he's going to be sad, and he is me, so I'm already sad. Oh, okay. I, I was actually going to be like, wait, you do have an no, agent? No, no, that, there are people that do what I do that have an agent. I've heard that, honestly, which is, I, I, it's so weird. Do they just spend their day scratching their heads and not doing anything? <laughs> They're like, yeah, just tweeting and being like, I can't believe I have this job. This is weird. <laughs> so you uh, upload a video today? <laughs> okay, keep, my keep, job's done. Keep doing what you're doing. I know there's uh, YouTubers who... Uh, even like within the gaming category, pay people to edit and upload and do all the interstitial stuff, like like thumbnails and annotations just talk and stuff over like the that. Video to play the game. <laughs> That's a great system. If I could just find somebody that sounds like me, hey, doing great. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll just pay them like twenty percent of the gross, and I'll just go retire somewhere. Nice. Well, yeah, that would be awesome. Really, That's. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of what Retsu Prey is, actually, is we get it, someone else yeah. to do the video on it, which I'm talking yeah. about. <laughs> I thought it was the best ski, but there are better ones. No, I, I heard um, the Toby Turner guy has, like, a PR dude. Yep, yeah, I have heard yeah. that as well. Yeah, well, I mean, he's on, like, TV TV now, apparently, like, doing shit for Cartoon Network. Really? Appar- yeah. He gets like, hired he- to do, like, speaking stuff at, for, like, Ubisoft at E3. He'll, mm-hmm. he'll do, like, their... Uh, it's supposed to be like a jokey, fun, we're introducing you to our fiscal year catalog, and I don't know. It, it's a little unusual. <laughs> yeah. So if they have a bad fiscal year, do they get them in there to clear the room so no one sees what the bad fiscal year looks like? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Shots fired at, at Tobuscus. Oh, no. <laughs> He's going to be mad. We're just going to die a beat. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> oh, burning those fucking YouTube bridges. Yeah, I was going to say, you guys are making a lot of enemies. I'll, you know, we have. I guess so. I, guess so. I, um, I guess so. That's my follow up. It's <laughs> good. Is it hard to do a three hour podcast like that? By the way, honestly, yes. Uh, it, it did take up most of my day between that and like the sound check, and it, it's nice because there's <laughs> breaks between. Like you get five uh, minutes, so you can like take a piss and pick your nose, which has been bothering you, and you can't do it because you're on webcam. Sure. Yeah, but no, it, it was awesome to be on. And I had a lot of fun, and it was good discussion. But three hours is definitely a marathon for something like that. Well, it's, it's great too because here, like just audio only, I am picking the shit out of my. Oh yeah, honestly. Like, I'm still wearing yeah. my pajamas and yeah, not I, even looking at. The I'm screen. not even doing that much. <laughs> so my 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 flies unzipped. I don't mind telling both of you. But um, <laughs> God, he's in his. Pajamas. I'm naked from the face down. From the face, down. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Uh, do you do do you do a lot of like cons and shit like that? Do you ever go to like these video game kind of um, conventions, I, sign autographs? I yes, I I have been to the last like three paxes, oh. and uh, apart from that, I I haven't really been to any conventions. But I I because I don't do any like scare cam or face cam type stuff. Really, my face is mm-hmm. a little bit of an enigma, except for the Wikitubia crowd. So right, yeah, you have five pictures here. Yeah, so I don't really get recognized that often, which I kind of. Like, I feel shitty to say it, but I'm a little awkward in real life, so it always makes me uncomfortable to be the center of attention, so... Let's, let's, That's let's, so let's, unusual. Oh, let's roll back, yeah. YouTube Let's Player awkward right. in real life. Wow. And, when, like, when I'm in the center of attention, I'm just like, oh, God, please, like, stop. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm, I'm happy to... I'm, I'm happy, like, you're a fan, and everyone that I've met has been really nice and courteous so far, but at the same time, I do kind of feel like weirdly itchy when I get yeah. recognized. 
I, I hear you. Like, and, I, and we've talked about this before, so I won't belabor the point. But, like, there there is this weird notion of, like, you want to talk to me? Mm-hmm. You know, like, I'm yeah. not anybody kind of thing, you know? That- I. I don't have a cat named Lexington, <laughs> Citation 11. That's we, or, we were briefed on that before. That's the cat that passed away. That was the one thing we were not supposed to mention. Oh, I thought the other cat. Uh, no, that cat's, oh, like, that, that cat's like five months old. He, he's got another at least two or three weeks left in him. Wow, I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, it's, Edit point. <laughs> <laughs> Edit point. No, we, we did talk about it. I'm just joking, of course. I know, yeah. I know. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm glad I mean, they don't. They might not know. They're like, "Wow, Sloppy is such a dick." You know, like, it's like, oh, God, this is so awkward. I can't interview anybody. I'm a monster. Um, I also get like requests sometimes at events like that. People are like, "You should do a meetup," and I'm like, "I will probably die of embarrassment if I do a meetup." <laughs> like, I I can't imagine even like if if eight people came and I'm just like, "All right." Let's do this. <laughs> I, what are my catchphrases? Like, I don't know how to... It, I can't just be a normal person in a situation like that, and it, it's difficult sometimes. Just think of it as a roguelike in real life. <laughs> I guess every just interaction's a little different. Compare- yeah, once you do about six or seven hundred of them, then you kind of get the groove. Just, you know what? Use Make a Binding of Isaac joke like you did in your most recent Scribble Knots on Mass Let's Play. <laughs> oh! Oh my god, he went there. Oh lord. Holy... Uh. That wasn't on the agenda. <laughs> yeah, you're going off the script here. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> My agent's looking at me right now. He's giving me the stink eye. I'll go to agenda item four, which I don't know why I wrote it like this. Panels? Real life? Day to day? Do um, those words mean anything to you? No, I mean, uh, <laughs> you, you, do this, so you do this for a living now, right? Mm-hmm. What is like? What is your day to day like? What, you wake up, you make some coffee. Walk me through a day in the life so I can update this page. Well, you li- you literally just nailed the first two things for sure. Okay. It, in right. some ways, like it does kind of come to resemble the same routine that someone would have with a more traditional job. Like I usually wake up at a reasonable hour, make coffee, and then you know drink coffee and catch up on the day's gaming news because I live on the West Coast. So when I wake up by like nine, all the news has already happened. And then do you get like a USA Today for gaming? <laughs> I do. It, it's uh, you know on Twitter sometimes people have those like automated bots that's like today's gaming news featuring blah blah and you for some reason. And then <laughs> it, it's just like automated tweets. I don't actually read those, but yeah, I just I just gotcha. spend six or seven hours on Twitter and then all the news just kind of like seeps into my brain through the the pores in my skin. Uh, mm-hmm. But no, actually, then I just start. Uh, typically, I'll do a lot of recording and I'll record four or five videos, usually in a series. Uh, which is fairly easy content to produce in a rapid-fire way. Like Isaac, of course, is something that I can just sit down for like 40 minutes and, and do a video. Uh, mm-hmm. Other series like Spelunky, Scribble Knot, same thing. Uh, and then, you know, after that, I'll send some emails to PR and be like, hey, your game's coming out. Could, I, could you send me a copy so I could cover it, basically, and then render at night and otherwise live the rest of my life? So it, it usually ends up being a fairly normal routine. I guess, but Mm -hmm. the last job I had before this was teaching English in South Korea, so I don't know if I know what a normal job is anymore. No, I think we can all relate to that. Um, (laughs) I I make iPhone apps, which is exactly like teaching children Korean or English. So you know. Well, yeah, I mean, you actually probably do a better job educating Korean children than I did when I was their actual teacher. (laughs) So (laughs) I actually learn from them. We outsource our stuff. (laughs) Red Supre is our educational reach out to the Korean community. Lil Kim is so good at these apps. Did you say Lil Kim? <laughs> yeah, I did. I, I was going to segue it into the musician. Kim but... Jong Little. <laughs> um, I mean, I think the one thing that worries me about stuff like that, not worries me, like, I'm worried for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but I mean, like, if, if to make that kind of decision is, I feel like the tricky thing about any sort of celebrity, and it feels more volatile with this internet kind of celebrity, is... What if you start to, like, decline and stuff? Like, do you ever worry about, like, three or four years down the road when you're living in a ditch? (laughs) I like that you you phrase it so bluntly, because usually (laughs) when people ask you about it, they do it in this kind of, like, subtly hostile way. They're like, so so what do you see yourself doing in five years? And the subtext is always like, you know this isn't going to last, right? No, 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 no. I I, I don't, yeah. I actually actually appreciate saying it more, uh, more frankly, as opposed to kind of hiding it. But, yeah, I mean, it's the kind of thing where... You know, two years ago or three years ago, this didn't even really exist as a, a viable way to, to make a living. And mm-hmm. I don't know where it'll be in, in five years. What worries me, I guess, is that 
Uh, I, I do totally think that the industry could decline. I, I say industry because there's no other term that is like mm-hmm. – <laughs> it kind of legitimizes it to say industry, which I don't necessarily feel comfortable <laughs> doing. But I can't be like this sphere of whatever I do. Anyway. Right. Um, but, it's an art form. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So it's, call it this medium, much. if you will. Right. Um, Thank you. It's, uh, there's so many people like jumping in because the barrier to entry is basically nil that I, I feel like – People are cannibalizing each other's audiences, and yeah, uh, yeah. I think that's what. Like, I don't think it's going to be declining demand for videos. I think it'll be just so many people are making videos that the audience is spread across a number of people. And yeah, the, that's my way of uh, completely ignoring the original question because I don't want to be <laughs> faced with my uh, <laughs> inevitable downfall and demise. In all, I, in all I, actuality, I, like, it, I because of the stuff that I do, which is not just. Let's play type content. I, I try to do some like editorial and critical type content as well. I have some relationships with more traditional games media, like uh, bloggers and people who write for for other websites that are actually <laughs> known and have some prestige associated with them. On like what I do for the most part. <laughs> yeah, those prestigious yeah. video game bloggers <laughs> and uh, and and New some York PR Times, in their black no. turtlenecks. I'm, just, I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry. Go Basically, ahead. what I'm getting is like I. The thing that I hold as like a backup plan is I have connections with people in the industry. So if I ever end up homeless, hopefully I could be like, "Come on, man! I I know a lot of YouTubers. You could just give me a job as PR, and I'll I'll work mm-hmm. for food." I uh, yeah, I think if yeah, if, if you can get into that industry and stuff, you'll probably you're probably fine that way. You know, because like I know like the biscuit that biscuit guy, the biscuit. <laughs> I know that biscuit guy is like he I think studied broadcasting. Mm. You know, and he does more game review stuff. So even if like. Tomorrow, all the game developers are like, you can't do Let's Play anymore. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And I, and I think you're probably fine, too, because you do, like, indie games, which, you know, indie game developers tend to be, like, please promote Yeah, they're games, all for you it. Know? Absolutely, yeah, you know? Like, you're not, you're not going to be hurting for it. But you do wonder with, like, all that stuff, if there's suddenly, like, a barrier for entry. Because we kind of saw that with the Nintendo monetizing mm-hmm. videos yeah. thing, right? Yeah, and, like, notably, like, Chugga Conroy seemed like he was going to get screwed, you know, for a bit. Yeah, but yeah. Fortunately for him, you know? So... Yeah, I, I think it depends. And, like, I've described YouTube, the whole thing, as being, like, islands of popularity, you know? Mm-hmm. That, it's definitely true. Yeah, and you've got you've got an island there, so, you know, I wouldn't worry too much about being homeless. But if I were you, I'd worry. Yeah. I'm just saying, you know, absolutely. I'm, every day I, I wake up, and the first thing I do is I check my email to be like, are, are people still watching my videos? Like, did I get banned <laughs> for copyright claims or something? Oh, okay, phew. Like, I can live another day on this earth and then <laughs> feel okay about it. Right. One more what? step towards the brink. <laughs> <laughs> that's a well that's I mean that's the kind of the crazy thing though about relying on YouTube is that there is any point where Google can just decide, you know what, like pull the plug. Right. Yeah, I mean not only uh on like a site-wide basis or if some kind of like overarching copyright law comes down or something like that or if a mm-hmm. bunch of publishers band together and decide that they're not going to allow it. But even there's stuff like uh YouTube has recently forced like Google Plus integration and there was a uh. a story of a guy who uh, he had like 200,000 subscribers, and then he went through the Google Plus uh, integration, and then he had zero. And he just can't get any of them back. And he's like, oh, I guess I'm oh. kind of fucked then. <laughs> Do people actually use the subscriber thing? <laughs> like Google Minus. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, man, we're burning bridges everywhere. Yeah, you, you guys are going to be the next uh, cautionary tale. I know. Shouldn't have called me well, Google Minus. Oh, shit, Google. <laughs> well, I mean, the, this is like a side gig for me. I, I don't even know if I call it a gig, really. This is like shit I do to get my fucking wife off my back. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> it, it helps legitimize me playing video games, more or less. Um, I feel that way a lot of the time, yeah. Well, that's the thing. I think, like, on SA, too, we make, we make fun of a lot of the whole notion of, like, internet celebrity. Yeah, but, yeah. I mean, there's something to be said for the fact that it is there. You know, I mean, it, it is a thing now, and Let's Play is now, I'd call it, like, I call it a million-dollar industry because I say in aggregate that ad revenue is probably, yeah, a million-dollar type of thing, you know? Mm-hmm. But um, In aggregate and for PewDiePie alone. Yeah, basically. <laughs> I hear you, you get measured in PewDiePies is the thing. That's true, yeah. Even he hasn't hit one PewDiePie yet. Whoa, holy. It's it's like it's like Googleplex. <laughs> it's like that, that number which can More like Google done. dollar sign. Oh, oh Shit, shit, wait, was that a... It, I don't know. Just go with it, it's good. <laughs> this is all right. <laughs> it works, okay? I, I've done Red Supreme for a while. <laughs> which which brings us to Hearthstone. Oh, yeah, it's a good segue. <laughs> what the... <laughs> it it Di- was a segue. <laughs> Diabetes, what, have you played Hearthstone? I haven't, no. 
No. Do you know what it is? No, I don't play or think about video games. Me neither. All right, help me out here, uh, if you can, Miss Wyan. Um, <laughs> NL. That was the... Oh, I, I told you not to use that one. Yeah, I, I'm oh. starting to think that this pre-podcast discussion was entirely for me to bring up things that we should not talk about so you could talk about <laughs> them in the stream and put me on the spot. Wait, I thought I thought calling you Northern Ryan was... The that's was that's also about. really bad, yeah. Oh, I thought NL was okay. All right, I'll accept it because right. I don't want to make things awkward, but... He's making these fucking demands. Jesus. <laughs> well, dude, this Who's podcast is, do you think this it's is? It's internet celebrity, man. It goes to your head. Now all of a sudden like, I want green M&Ms exclusively in my locker room. And locker room? What the oh. <laughs> Let me tell you something, you know, buddy. Our star's <laughs> rising. Hearts, We're going to fucking make it. Hearthstone is a collectible card game that is currently yeah. in uh, <laughs> closed beta, developed by I, Activision Blizzard. <laughs> As I understand it, um, it's 510 and was announced at PAX 2013. <laughs> um, you want a citation no, for that? It, uh, no, so it, it, help me out here. It, it's basically like um, it's a card game that you, you go on and you, you play against people. Yeah. I guess as opposed to playing cards in real life. Yes, in, entirely. It's basically it's like Magic the Gathering but set in the Warcraft wow. universe and, and slightly tweaked, I guess, in certain ways, but I haven't played enough Magic to really know the meaningful differences between them. Well, Magic's a pretty new thing, so it makes sense <laughs> why they would want to jump on that bandwagon. Yeah, exactly. I think it's like, they saw that the, the niche was opening up because Magic just came out back in, like, 1989 or something like that, and they're like, this is the time to jump in. Can I, can I give you a kiss-ass kind of compliment? Oh, whatever? man, I would love that. So in prep for this, I watched your, a few of your videos, uh, the latest ones, you know, so we have recent shit to talk about. Yeah. Um... And I saw this video, this bonus video you made, where you bought forty packs of, like forty, is it decks or packs? Yeah, uh, in the in them? the industry, we, we refer to them as slats. Slats. No, they're okay. they're just they're, they're packs. And I'm also starting to feel like this kiss ass comment is turning into a backhanded insult. It's not. It's not. <laughs> No, 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 for real. And here are the falls with the video that we have. <laughs> no, this is the fucked up thing, though, because I was, when I saw that, I'm like, oh, he's just going to talk about cards for, like, 20 minutes, you know? <laughs> and uh, I got to say, though, you didn't you, you didn't stop talking. All right, that's a back. <laughs> no, um, no you, you, you seemed like you actually had shit to say through the whole fucking video that was really informed. And it's like, I kind of came away with, holy shit, he really knows a lot about Hearthstone. <laughs> and... I think the impression maybe people who don't know you get from, like, 600-plus Binding of Isaac videos is you're one of those people that just kind of kicks out videos for no good reason. But it sounds like you actually do your homework and, like, know what the fuck you're talking about. Uh, both of those are true. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, I'm... I, I kick out a lot of videos, and I, I think at the risk of, of unveiling the charade, I... Sometimes I'm informed, and sometimes it's like riding a bike where, you know, I just don't <laughs> stop talking, because if I stop talking, it's like I stop pedaling, and then you start to wobble, and you fall down, and people are like, wait a minute, this guy doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about. But if you just continually just have, like, machine gun-style dialogue, and you come up with reasons in your head, then all of a sudden it sounds like you know what you're talking about. The commenters of my Hearthstone videos would be amazed and probably frothing mad that you have described me as someone who is knowledgeable about that game. Oh, wow. So this, that was all <laughs> bullshit? Well, I think I know a decent amount about Hearthstone. I, I've been playing a ton of it, but obviously everyone on the internet who doesn't have Hearthstone yet is an expert because they watch 12 hours of content on the game every day. So uh, I'm still a novice compared to most of the people that watch my videos, I guess. So let's let's just headline this, basically. Northern Lion is full of shit. <laughs> that's, I would love if this was like a, an interview <laughs> for like a magazine, and that's what the headline was. So that's the trick. I, I give you the, the compliment, and then you kind of dig your own grave is how I it's, like to do It's a perfect that, time basically. for another, another House of Cards uh, impression. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to do my own, but... No, I understand. <laughs> I think, now, I think... I've played Hearthstone. <laughs> <laughs> I really, this, and I you, hate... sir, are basically like Hitler. <laughs> that is my YouTube comment. I only got a legendary card. I hate this small ball bullshit. That was pretty good. <laughs> I, I hate to bring this back to House of Cards, but it's going to be the House of Cards podcast for the rest of the yeah, running absolutely. time. I mean, yeah, that was a good Jersey, South Carolina accent. <laughs> it's either way. I yeah. really love you... the, uh, in the one episode, well, in, in like episode three or something, he's playing a PlayStation 3, and then episode five, he goes over to like some guy's house, and he's like, is this a PS Vita? I, yeah. <laughs> I got to get one of these for my car. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> and that's the best Kevin Spacey you know, South Carolina impression that I can do. That's good. 
I'm imagining him like turning to the camera while he's playing Hearthstone. Like, did he really play that deck against me? You know, kind of. <laughs> I wake up, get my coffee, read my Twitter bot game news. <laughs> When you, it gives my life more gravitas when you put it in that voice. I think it would really sell it as if you uh, you release a big video and then go eat a big thing of ribs. Oh yeah, afterwards, absolutely. Yeah. I'm a hungry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I that. hope. I don't know if that was Kevin Spacey. I'm this, hungry like a it, lion from the north. <laughs> he no, he absolutely says I'm a hungry at the end of episode one. Okay, <laughs> so. <laughs> Just so, don't you fuck with me on this either of you. I gotta check uh, out Kevin Spacey's Wikitubia page. <laughs> <laughs> at what at what point did you start referring to yourself as bigger than Spacey? <laughs> I mostly like since birth. I hear you. Hmm. You watch a lot of Netflix? Uh, I don't know why that question came across as kind of sinister. <laughs> you watch a lot of Netflix? <laughs> this is going somewhere. I know it. What do you think of all that kitty porn you've been watching? I know of it. No, um, no, I, I'm just, I'm just bullshitting here. Yeah, yeah, I, I like Netflix. It's cool. For the life of me, cannot find a good horror movie on Netflix. Mm. It's been pissing me off lately. Uh, horror. I don't know if I've watched a, a horror movie on Netflix. Actually, there's a lot of like B movie 1980s like terrible shit, which is awesome, and I, I love, I love it for that. But yeah, there's a lot of horror bull stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah I I don't know I can't find one for the life of me like it's I I just started I just saw Pontypool actually mm, yeah. which I like the first two thirds of I, and you'd like it it's in Canada it takes place in Canada is that there good? is a uh, there is a movie called Ghost Cat <laughs> no there isn't there's yeah oh that's think, awesome um uh, what's her, I think Ellen Page is in it really I think so like Let post post. Uh, Juno Ellen Page or like pre-famous Ellen Page? Somewhere in the middle, maybe. <laughs> I'm going to have to do some research. It was like as to, she was filming Juno, she was also filming Ghost Cat <laughs> yeah. on the side. <laughs> Go to <laughs> imdb.wikia.com, quick. <laughs> um, <laughs> Ghost Cat, by the way, is the story of the things from Cave Story in the Outer Wall. But anyway. I actually fucking typed in IMDb Wikitubia in the Google Chrome <laughs> right now. I'm such an idiot. Yes! <laughs> Mental manipulation is complete. Yeah, you... All right, is... here we go. Ghost Cat, uh, 2003. Oh, so that, that's definitely pre-Juno. That was like a 2007 joint. Mm. Wait, I see Ghost Cat 2010. Whoa, wait, whoa. Well, it was so successful that it deserved a remake. How deep does this rabbit hole go? Maui is a falling angel who transforms between a woman and a man-eater. What does this have to do with Ghost Cats, though? I don't know, and there's only one cast member. Huh. That's alive. <laughs> Holy shit. Speaking of ghost cats, let's talk about Lexington. Oh, man. <laughs> it's dark. I'm sorry. It was right I there. should point out the cat lived a long and fruitful life as cats go. It was like 16, and it was it was in pain, so it Aww. died, and that that's okay. Oh. Well, I'm, I'm glad it found peace. I will say that is the, the second cat I'm I've had. I'm glad starting Ghost Cat. <laughs> <laughs> the second cat I've had that has died since starting this uh, quote-unquote career, so I don't know if maybe there's a correlation there. You know what I've noticed with Scarecam LPRs, like some of the bad ones, all of them? Uh, if they own a cat, the cat tends to try to stop them from doing it. Really? Like they'll jump. Yeah, they'll like jump on their faces or like scratch the keyboard and stuff. I, I think cats are kind of in tune with Let's Play. Yeah, it's like how dogs can sense ghosts. Cats are like, oh, you're just doing this for the likes, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dogs don't. Dogs will subscribe to fucking. Oh anything. my god, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Half of my subscribers are actually dogs. Whoa! I like it that's that awesome. way. They're, they're very easily entertained. That's what's great about they, dogs. They'll pause up anything. <laughs> they'll loyal. And they'll, they'll growl at people on Reddit. Is the thing. Exactly. They're like dog army. Subscribe to become a cub today. Wait, puppy. <laughs> Subscribe to become a puppy today. Um, we have a subreddit, and I don't know how. Mm. Like, I, we didn't set it up or anything, and I think there's like four people in it at a given <laughs> time. What, what, why, why is Reddit a thing? Why is Reddit a thing? Yeah, I don't get it, um, honestly. I we we have our own subreddit for the stream that we do, and I like it a lot because it's it's totally tongue in cheek and it's meant to be like a circle jerk, which I guess is oh. is Reddit in general. But people will, I don't know, just post like Photoshop pictures of us with like a lizard's body or something like that, or you know, 
And they make yeah, jokes, yeah. and it's it's kind of funny. But for a lot of like content creator subreddits, I'm just like I, I know I don't need to go here. I am the guy. <laughs> I can shut this thing down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah I, I I feel like Reddit is this weird like I, in fact that's the first positive thing I've ever heard about Reddit. Um, but it's like kind of like the Stack Overflow model. Mm. I don't know if you ever heard of that. Yeah, site or... that's the site that's for like uh, programming help, right? Yeah, it's like all tech answers. And I, I think that typically works good, beca- works better because, um, works well, excuse me. Uh, there usually are definite technical answers. So if someone finds it, you upvote that and that bubbles to the top. And I think it works there. But when it comes to community stuff, you know, people kind of just tend to go with the popular thing and upvote yeah. what they like and you know, downvote the things they don't like, you know. It, There's a subreddit for Let's Play 2, which makes even less sense to me. I uh, actually, I go to that subreddit a lot and it, uh, it varying degrees of infuriation and and fun i would say and value yeah. you, you can't downvote things there uh you might be able to now i can't remember it it, it oscillates back and forth because you know people want to like post their videos there to advertise them so they don't want them to be downvoted but then people who don't go to that subreddit to like watch let's play videos which is almost everybody because everyone there mm-hmm. produces their own content they're like we want to downvote this so that the front right. page stays like open to discussion but, I mean, doesn't it just kind of shoot itself in the foot then when it's like if everyone's just there to promote their own channel, then no one really gets promoted? That's the thing is, like, you, you want it yeah. to be like, or I want it to be like uh, a place for people to kind of share feedback and, I don't know, like improve each other's videos. There's other, like, yeah. Let's Play forums on the internet that do the same thing, basically. Uh, but it does, sometimes it kind of crosses the line to become everyone's, like, advertising to everyone else who is also advertising. It's gotten better mm-hmm. recently, actually, but... Uh, still, you know, there are periods of time, or there have been periods of time, where there's just like 20 episode 11 Minecraft Let's Plays on the front page. <laughs> <laughs> and people are like, I don't understand why my content's being downvoted. Anyway, <laughs> we don't need to go down that road. Sure, and no, I understand. Have you ever thought about posting all of your Binding of Isaac parts <laughs> to the subreddit all at the same at time? At the same time? Um, yeah. That'd be pretty good. That would probably give me like six or seven combined views. So it's probably a good <laughs> hey. use of my time. Yeah. There you go. Have you ever considered going to the Something Awful forums uh, for Let's Play? I'll tell you what. I when I first started making videos, I you know found out what like Let's Playing was, and then I was going to go to Something Awful, but I was like, "This is ten bucks. I can't afford that." So <laughs> I, w- I went to a free Let's Play forum instead, and uh, never never looked back. Nice, nice. And now you can buy twenty Something Awful accounts. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, I was always intimidated. Right? It was like, "Oh, they're really like they're harsh over there. Be careful." We are harsh. We are very harsh over there. I mean, you know, part of it, though, is that we went through the whole kind of like, hey, I this this Let's Play thing looks really easy, so let me just post, post, post mm, kind of yeah. thing. So you kind of need to be like, no, 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 we don't. Yeah, over at Something Awful, we're not so Sundere. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Wait, oh, you mean Sundere. Sundere, Sundere-er. <laughs> Sundere. It must be yeah. crazy now, because like, when I started making videos, it was like the fall of 2010, and... There weren't that many people doing it. I mean, there were a lot of people doing it because it's the kind of thing that's pretty easy to get into. But compared to now, there's like everybody has a YouTube channel. So there, there must be like a ton of content. On SA? Uh, yeah. Nah. Oh, really? No. We have Danganronpa. That's about it. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, that, that's... Yeah, I just realized you didn't know about that. Um, no, we have, we, we, have an, we have one... Whoa. What? <laughs> I have, a, I have a laugh button. I'm not proud of Is that of your it. familiar that you have with you? <laughs> Hold on a second. You have a laugh button? Yeah, this is when... when it sounds just like you. Joke. <laughs> but you could just do it. No, um, no we, we have an anime game that's really that you can't get anywhere else ah, okay. until, re- until very recently. Someone made a fan translation. But um, that's it. Other than that. No, um, I think the $10 uh, wall scares people off. And then when someone gets banned, they usually will go to Reddit and talk about <laughs> how full of shit we are and stuff. Because... We don't we don't tolerate shit there, yeah. like at all. Like if you post like some meme or something, you're probably gonna get hit. You know, yeah. It makes me. I'm a, I'm a moderator. It makes me feel more entitled and better about myself, <laughs> my own life. I like to call it super cyberbullying because now there's money involved. Is the thing super high school level? Yeah, uh, damn it. Yeah, it's a good yeah. thing I didn't go there because that's basically the, the kind of humor I I curry in. Is is that? An acceptable use of that phrase, I don't know. That uh, you curry in, like, that kind I like of, the way know. you curry favor, or it's it's a kind of <laughs> yeah. Okay. Them's the kind of jokes I makes, you know, meme right. jokes, etc., etc. The, et the low hanging fruit. Yeah. 
Does anybody else remember this indie gem? Ocarina of Time. JPEG, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. <laughs> I understand. Speaking of which, hey, Ocarina of Time. Yeah. I played it. Yeah, I hear it's pretty good. Yeah, it's Little good. known indie company came out with it like 17 years ago. Mm hmm. Absolutely. And they made some Nintendo off that. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> um, what's your update schedule like? Uh, like how many videos I Segway! Up- how many videos I upload a day or something? Yeah. Uh, usually I do like three a day, and then three times a week I do a, a three hour stream. There's a lot of threes. It's a magical number, I guess. I understand. Three tell hours us, uh, stream? Tell us a little bit about your Let's Play tech. <laughs> I, I have a computer, like a, a personal desktop oh, computer. Oh, slow down. Slow. <laughs> There's various parts inside of it uh, which facilitate doing the very serious and involved work that I do. Uh, I also <laughs> have a little known piece of software known as Fraps, and uh, it allows you to magically record your screen. You um? Do you do exclusively like PC games, like no consoles or anything uh, like that? I, I have the like the equipment to record consoles, and for a while I was doing it, but it's just it's gotten to the point where it's so much more convenient to record PC games that if there's if it's a, a console exclusive, I oftentimes just like won't cover it now. Yeah. Uh, oh, so you're racist. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if consoles are technically a race. To tell that to anime. <laughs> yeah, that's got a good point. Okay, fair enough. That's like some hyperdimension Neptunia stuff. <laughs> I just outed Absolutely. myself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> are you Are you excited for La Mulana too? Uh, you know, excited, a little scared. I, I like La Mulana a lot, but I I never accomplished like anything in it. <laughs> I spent a lot of time playing it, and it, it's one of those things. It's like a time. Vortex, where you can play it for like three hours, but because the saves only update your playtime when you actually make meaningful progress, you're like, I've played 12 minutes of La Mulana? Like, where, <laughs> I played it all afternoon, where did that time go? But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited I, for it. I think where did that time go would have applied either way, if you wanted to. Yeah, no, fair um, enough, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know what's funny is, I like La Mulana a lot, but I have never played it, and whenever I look at a Let's Play of it, I'm like, that looks like too much for me. <laughs> it is um, like, I don't know, it kind of reminds me of, of Dark Souls in that it's super intimidating, but there's also mm-hmm. puzzles in it, which is even more intimidating for me. Well, yeah, it's kind of like, how would I just, how would you compare it to Spelunky, which Diabetes is more familiar mm. with? Uh, uh, it, I don't know, th- there were, in Spelunky, <laughs> at least it's very easy to know where to go. Every level is like you go to the exit. There, there's secrets, of course, and like that whole hidden kind of layer of going to the City of Gold and getting to hell after that. But mm-hmm. um, otherwise, you go down. Yeah, exactly. You you start at the top of the level and you go down. Whereas in La Milana, it's like, oh shit! Like the water's poisonous, and I've got to get something to make the water not poisonous. And the, the waterfall hits me on the head, and I can't swim up it until I get a helmet. And it, it's way more like kind of gated in a metro, Metroidvania style. Which makes it frustrating mm-hmm. sometimes because you walk around for like a hundred years trying to figure out where the order of which you're supposed to do things. Yeah, it seems like a very obtuse Metroidvania, where usually in like those games, you, the new item, you're like, oh, I can go back to this place. In La Mulana, it's like, here's a fountain, and you're like, thanks? <laughs> Basically, you <know>? yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, like in, in Super Metroid or like Guacamelee, the doors are basically color-coded. And then you get an item, <laughs> or you get a new ability, and you do your move, and like, Oh, this is an uppercut, and it's red. That probably opens those red blocks that I couldn't get through before. Right. Yeah, it, La Mulana, you're right. It's very obtuse. But you never finished it. Never finished La Mulana? Yeah. God, no. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> so you, you claim to like indie games and things like that. But... I'm, I'm going to tell you a secret. I've never actually played The Binding of Isaac. Whoa! <laughs> Whoa. Yes! Exclusive content! Every single one of those episodes is just uh, the gameplay trailer looped over and over and over for varying lengths of time while I talk over it. Oh my god, look at Tubi, you just went down! <laughs> I just I just watched 230 episodes and it never hit me. <laughs> That's good. You did an excellent exactly. job. Exactly, mission accomplished. I've done my job then. Absolutely. The, the, the dialogue, like the commentary I do, isn't actually meaningful. It's kind of like a like an NLP hypnosis type thing where it just puts you into a trance and then you wake up and you're like, that was really good. Wow. Click the like button. Amazing. Make sure to smash that like button. You know what? Click it, click dislike, and then click like again. That actually counts for 1.2 likes, so. Does it? That's I got to fucking get it. Yeah, it's really good for, for SEO. And if you can get to like 4,000 likes on this episode, then I'll release the, uh, the next episode, which I've had locked in my basement for the past six weeks. <laughs> 
<laughs> no pressure. This has been our most successful board meeting. <laughs> I, that, I can't stand that, like, goddamn get me to 10,000 likes before the next episode thing. It kills me. It really does. It's, like, we, I, I totally understand why people do it, because it works and it actually does make a huge difference in search rankings and, like, right. how your video gets spread virally. But it does kind of feel like, I already feel to a certain extent, especially when I'm like streaming on Twitch uh, and I like call out people who subscribe, I already feel yeah. like I'm, what I'm doing is glorified whoring. But I mm -hmm. prefer to keep that veneer that there's some legitimacy. So whenever it's like, if you guys could just like do this for me, then I would be really appreciative. I kind of feel icky about it. Yeah. I, you well, know, at least it, you don't congratulate them for doing it. Right. <laughs> and I try to avoid things like, that seem like they have blatant disrespect for the audience, like giving them a name so they're more manipulated uh, into subscribing. Yeah. That kind of stuff, and or, or you make an ASCII art thing that they can post on other people's channels. Yeah. <laughs> That's, like, really smarmy to me. It is. Um, and, you know... It, you got hit by the Northern Lion truck! <laughs> <laughs> and it's an ASCII art truck full of lions. <laughs> if someone in, uh, listening to this could just make that and email that to me, I would really like that. <laughs> <laughs> you can call all your fans the lion tamers. I was thinking, maybe, or... well, I always joke, and I'll be like, you "Subscribe to become a cub today. You can be one of the Northern that... Lions cubs." Because then it's got it's got that weird kind of like tribal element where I'm like their protector as well, right? It's like come into the yeah. fold, and I'll get and... you get all the benefits of being around me. This and is... you know what you could call people you hire to get that shit out for you? What, what? cub scouts? Oh, oh. Even I'm impressed with mm -hmm. that. Huh? This is why uh, diabetes is Retsu Prey's social director of marketing. <laughs> That's right. Strategy. 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 I, director. Yeah, I can tell. Great with the wordplay. That shit would play really nicely on Twitter. Absolutely, it would. Even they're 100. concise enough that you have enough room for a hashtag afterwards. <laughs> oh, excellent. I think, I mean, but for me, I mean, there's a difference between, I think, thanking us somebody for subscribing um, and, th and then, like, saying, I'm not going to produce some kind of content <laughs> unless you give me something. Because it's like you already gave them something in watching the ad or whatever, yeah, yeah. you know? That's, like, that's what kind of irks me about it. Like, um, or, you know, like, uh, when somebody's like, you know, I want to thank everybody who subscribed to me. I'm okay with that mm -hmm. as long as it's not, like, uh, something, some bullshit, like, I'm so proud of you. Like, it was their <laughs> job to do that or something. You know what I mean? Right, Where yeah. it's, like, it's just smarmy. It's... I think there's a kind of this weird wave of entitlement going on with YouTube Let's Play, where people feel like, I'm doing a great thing, I deserve recognition and reward. It's like, eh, you fucking don't, you know? Yeah, and you know, this is weirdly honest to talk about, but sometimes I do find myself falling into that as well. Like, if, if I get, like, one bad comment sometimes, I'll be just be like, oh, this guy's like a piece of shit, and I, like, take, like, <laughs> a, a screenshot, and I'm, like, about to post it to Twitter, and I'm like, wait a minute. I, it, it, it's very helpful, and this is kind of a segue that is maybe not super comfortable, but, you know, I've met a lot of reasonably big YouTube personalities in real life, and there's people who are, like, normal and, and down-to-earth, and it's not always mm -hmm. the people you'd expect that are like that, also. There's been a lot of people where, you know, online they maybe have some kind of personality, and then in real life they're really genuine and awesome to hang around. And then there's people who have, like, big egos, and, like, every conversation they have is about, like, how to improve their analytics and metrics and stuff like that, and, you know, <laughs> how well, like, Video X performed, and I'm like, you can't really, like, we're very yeah. lucky to do what we do, but don't act like it's, uh, like, an incredible service to humanity. Right, yeah. yeah. That's what bugs me about it. It's just, like, this whole, like, um, where when Nintendo decides they want to monetize their videos, we're like, that's bullshit. Like, unfortunately, it's not bullshit. It is their content, it is their art assets and things like that, you know, that they worked on. So just, I mean, and I understand saying I'm making, it's, there's the whole transformative work argument and all that, but I, I do feel like what what pisses me off too is the videos that don't mention the game at all, because it's like, are you like completely oblivious to the fact <laughs> that the video wouldn't have been here without the video game? Like, how did that go above your head? Yeah, I mean, when I see that, I was actually thinking about that last night. I was as I was doing my mental preparation for the rigors of this this podcast. Oh man! Uh, and yeah. that is something that I think a lot of YouTubers are guilty of is not recognizing like the work of the people that went into the game, especially right. people that 
Gone Home is an example that I'd, I'd like to bring mm-hmm. up because, you know, regardless of how you feel about that game, I think that was a game that was designed to be experienced firsthand and, you know, in a kind of unspoiled environment. And when yeah. people kind of did, like, day one Let's Plays of it, it's like a two-hour, hour-and-a-half-long game. And then just, like, crack jokes over top of the whole thing. I'm just like, wow, you're, like, yeah. you're, you're kind of a piece of shit. Like, you're... I mean, yeah. you're not, like, personally a piece of shit, but I really dislike that you've done this because... I don't know. It well, kind of feels like it shows disrespect for the developer's work and how they wanted it to be consumed by most people. No, I agree. I wrote a thing on this, uh, and the, I think it's either people who, they're kind of not really thinking about it, and they're like, I see other people on YouTube doing this, and all they seem to do is talk over a video game. I guess that's what I do. But then there are the dickheads who are like, okay, this game just came out. In order to hit my search ranking, I am just going to play it blind, and who the fuck cares about the game? Yeah. Because this is my show. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like, it's you're supposed to laugh at me. Please call yourself a broccoli head or whatever the fuck, <laughs> you know. There probably is a guy now who makes his fans call him broccoli head. That I that's, that's broccoli smile. Broccoli smile. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Do you want to have my job? See, I can hang here as well. Yeah, you invited totally. the right person. <laughs> Absolutely. I feel like I should totally, in the interest of, of fairness, point out that I totally do day one Let's Plays as well. But to kind of try to rise above the chafe, chaff, I don't know, I always get the mm-hmm. skin irritation confused with the bad part of the wheat. But uh, I understand, yeah. Uh, I, I usually play the games beforehand, and for something like Gone Home or... Uh, amnesia machine for pigs. I'm like, I don't want to like ruin the experience for people. Like, I, this... and you carefully construct your dick jokes ahead of time <laughs> that you use in the game. I actually, I have like a, a focus group, and I run the dick jokes by them first, and then I see, you know, what demographics it hits with, and then if those overlap well with the kind of people who are likely to smash that like button, uh, then I go mm. with it. And it's a very complicated process. It's very busy script writing, pre-production stuff like that. I think actually playing it first puts your head and shoulders above people who like don't even bother. Uh, and I mean, there's also a thing too where if you put uh, uh, there's a thing called let's fail. Yep. That we've done on something which I agree with. I think it's totally fine where you just you do play a blind or for day one launch play, but you don't have to play the whole game. Mm-hmm. You know, you just give your first impression of it and like yell at people ride along with that. This is my first time kind of experience with it. I think that's all right. But I think if you're just playing the game through completion on day one because you want to hit ahead in the search. You kind of know you're doing that, and you're kind of being a douchebag. There is, you know? um, it, it's weird because as someone who makes my living from it, I I can't be that angry about it. Like I'm kind of begrudgingly like, I mean, I I do things that maximize the visibility of my videos, and I do it because that directly increases the compensation that I get as a result of it. But there, uh-huh. are, there are certain steps, like everyone has the line that they're not, well, okay, almost everybody has a line they're not willing to cross in terms of, like, scumbaggery. Speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there are, there are people who are shameless, and those people, I, I don't really begrudge them, because, you know, maybe this career, it's like a professional athlete or something, it only lasts for, like, two or three years, and you kind of want to maximize your earning potential while you're here, so that when it actually goes belly up, you, you have something you can coast on for a while where you get a job that actually requires meaningful skills and conveys some kind of life experience that's employable. But, uh, you know, that line, I think it's fair to say, is different for, for me than for a lot of people. But there's probably a lot of people who watch my stuff and they're like, wow, this guy's a piece of shit. Like, he played Scribble Knots on Mast on day one. Like, I think the, the tricky thing is, though, what, what a lot of people don't realize, too, is that this is not just a thing they do for themselves, per se, meaning that, like, if you do the kind of thing where you play a game, even some people are doing pre-launch Let's Play, yeah. they get like a review copy and shit. When you do that, though, it makes everybody doing Let's Play look like that because that's where the ga- like bigger AAA game developers can go in and say, like, well, of course Kane Lynch 2 didn't sell well. This dude just yeah. did the whole fucking thing in one day. <laughs> and look at him. He's not even linking back to us or anything. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, there's a point there, too, then, when... When you say, like, is like a professional athlete, we only have two, three years of it. But, like, doing things like that, I think, kind of encourages a lot of the bigger companies to say, we should have a handle on this Let's Play thing, because these people are making money hand over fist over shit we do. Yeah. You know? Which is why I don't mind you so much, because of, like, you do a lot of indie Oh, thank games. you very much. That was very kind of yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that was, it was total bullshit. <laughs> it fucking suck. Um, so, anyway. But speaking of you selling out. <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> No, I, I don't know. That's the, I understand what you mean, though. That like, I guess if you're gonna do this as your career, you gotta you gotta do these things. I don't even know what these things are. Yeah. To maximize your, so we'll have a long talk after this podcast. Yeah, I don't want to give but, up um, the you know the keys to the kingdom publicly like this. 
the secret, yeah, the secret recipe or whatever. But maybe you could throw me a bone. <laughs> and so, like, um, is it... Is it is it wrong to put like Hitler Youth in my tags <laughs> of my YouTube video, or is that? Do you mean like, like morally wrong, or is it a good idea <laughs> from a strategy standpoint? Because those. Oh, are... I just mean strategy. Oh yeah, it's a great idea. Yeah. Lots of people. Oh, awesome. Lots of people searching for uh, for Hitler Youth. Usually, what I do is I wake up and I'm like, uh, I look at Twitter's trending topics, and I'm like, okay, well, I'm actually on it right now. So. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> tag tag someone you never want to lose is a trending topic right now, so it'll be like Binding of Isaac episode six twenty two, and in the tags is like Isaac Binding of Isaac, the Binding of Isaac. Tag someone you never want to lose. Miley Cyrus twerk, <laughs> government shutdown, worst twerk ever. <laughs> how to Barack tie a Obama Obamacare? How to tie right. a tie? How to kiss a girl? <laughs> like just stuff like that. You just pop that in there, and then naked titties. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's always trending. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Phoebe Cates, sex scene, Scarlett Johansson nude. It's just stuff like that. You know, you just skirt around the YouTube terms of service. You just have a notepad document with all those phrases that you just <laughs> toss in all the text. I actually just I, I skim CNN.com every day, and it automatically updates a Word document for me. <laughs> wow, you are so, high tech. Yeah. This is real inside baseball. <laughs> I feel like I'm learning so much about the YouTube LP scene. What's funny is that really? like half of the shit that I'm saying might be only my experience. There might be like if you brought like the Rad Brad or something on here, he might be like, "That's not how it works at all." He was, yeah, I see. Have you met the Rad Brad? I have not. Oh, okay. I was gonna ask how he was, but yeah, that's okay. Whatever. No, um, I was gonna say, is there are there any Let's Players you feel like should be getting more exposure? Maybe. Like anybody uh, underrated? Yeah, like Slobby for diabetes? Right. <laughs> well, obviously you guys. Right, right, right. Yes, but um, we, we talked about him a couple times before the show, but uh, Rock Lee Smile, he doesn't totally Let's Play, but he does kind of like first impression style videos, kind of like WTF is that Total Biscuit does. I see. And, uh, but he does games that like nobody else covers. He does really obscure indie stuff, and a lot of times it's like really janky, but it has a good idea or a good heart. Like the person that was making it was like, putting their heart and soul into it. And he, he kind of, he's less of like a, he's not doing the videos to necessarily like get cheap laughs out of it. He's kind of curating content and being like, you guys should check this out. It's, it's kind of weird. So yeah, I think he should get more exposure. Well, the problem is that, you know, traditional marketing doesn't work that well for people like that always because not many people are searching for the game. So not many people necessarily discover his channel. So anytime I get a chance to talk about uh, Nick's channel, I, I like to a lot. Well, gotcha. Tell him to put GTA 5 in his tags. Yeah, there or you like go. let's play GTA Five, and then the thumbnail is like that promotional image of the girl in the bikini giving the peace sign. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. that's in every thumbnail for episode one of every GTA Five let's play. And then when you click on the video, it's just like surprise. It's uh, like Roomba Vacuum Simulator 2013. Well, maybe you could do that though. You can play like for three seconds, like yeah, you know what? I'm bored of GTA Five. Let's go <laughs> on to you know inputting or whatever. Hey, that's a good game. You know, I learned it uh, looking at some of your videos for this podcast. I appreciate it. I was. Did you smash the like button? I, I will not rest until that like button is actually broken. I'll tell you what. This is the, the truth, too. Is um, my wife said a bridal shower today, so I had the house mm -hmm. to myself. So I had to go grocery shopping. So I was. This is really obnoxious, but I'm in Shoprite with my iPhone in the top of the shopping cart with my earbuds in, <laughs> listening to you talk about like inputting and shit. That is the kind of thing. That is weirdly embarrassing for me to know. You know why? Well, I'll, I'll tell you why. Because today I'm like, ah, oh, Northern Lion, I got a podcast with him. I should probably watch some of this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> That's, uh, you know, not to one-up you here on the game of who knows each other less. Uh -huh. But I, I, I've been a fan of uh, Retsupre for, like, two years. Oh, thank you. Uh, yeah. Since I first got started. And a, a huge fan of, like, Mystery Science Theater, which is kind of how I got into this whole side of things to begin with. Mm -hmm. uh, but I was like, yeah, I should really listen to this podcast to make sure that it's seriously not just, like, <laughs> hardball or something. Like, <laughs> go on and just get grilled. So, yeah, I listened to a lot of one episode and was like, okay, this is going to be fine. I, I don't, I am not good enough at talking to people <laughs> to do a hardball thing. <laughs> but if I were to be, no, um, uh oh. <laughs> No, I got it. So, in your inputting video, you, uh -oh. you talk about the spaceship minigame before you actually show it. That's uh, foreshadowing. It's a literary device. I don't want to make yeah. myself seem, you know, better than I am necessarily, but... Yeah, sure, no, just ruin the game for everybody. Um, it's the same, it's a tactic that a lot of famous authors use that I would compare myself to. Really? No, not really. Really? No, I got that there. <laughs> Northern Lion thinks of himself as famous author. And you can't see this, but I'm looking off in the distance and writing in the air. Oh, yeah. 
Well, yeah. I don't mean I don't mean like a a great author. Maybe just like a Dan Brown or something. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, don't sell yourself that short. Don't be a northern liar. <laughs> oh, dear. Where's the la- Okay, yeah, I got it. Classic literary device. <laughs> I wish- I need, like, a second laugh button when the first laugh button doesn't get a reaction, and then I can just, like, chain it ad infinitum, and that would be the send-off. <laughs> would you like to just play that while we talk about the video game Harvester and or Dark Side Phil? <laughs> no. No comment. No comment. We already have it. Ne- next question. Next question. Um, I'm, I mean, I'm kind of out of questions, really, but, uh, I mean, if we can just bullshit out, whatever. I I'm could ask you done. James Lipton's ten questions. <laughs> really get to know you, know how you James tick. Lipton, he's the tea guy. He is no. the, uh, beh- uh the ac- inside the actor studio. Yeah. You know he's, like, 90? Yeah. He's a pretty, I mean, you know, I don't want to send the wrong message here, but he's a pretty good-looking guy for a 90-year-old. I mean, I'd fuck that shit. <laughs> what? <laughs> Well, Some mornings I wake up and look in the mirror and I'm like, shit, I wish I looked as good as James Lipton does. <laughs> what is the right message on that exactly with James Lipton? I, didn't, I, I just wanted to, uh, I don't know, manage expectations or something. <laughs> All right, my mistake, he's not 90, he's 87. Here's your story of Northern Lion, a pig to marry of James Lipton. What a scoop! <laughs> <laughs> is it a, a vowed James Lipton fan? Right. Like it to be a, a citation. That's like citation 29 now. <laughs> We've gotten a lot of personal information out here. Here's the hard-hitting question. What is your favorite SCP story from the SCP wiki? Uh, this is so weird because... Oh my god, you have uh, an answer? Well, until like last week, I knew nothing about SCP except that it is you know played on YouTube mm-hmm. a lot. Yeah. Uh, but then Frictional released their teaser for their new game. I forget what it was called, like Soma or something like that. Uh-huh. And everyone in the comments was like, this has a total SCP vibe. So then I went to, I was like, what the fuck is SCP? And I you know, read a couple of the entries. So I don't have an answer for you, but at least I sort of know what you're talking about. Um, it's, it's one of those things that, uh, was, like, a good idea at the time, maybe, mm. but, like, anything that's completely dependent on user-generated content, it kind of falls apart when you start reading more of it. Some of them that I read were, like, I was like, oh, that's a really, like, intriguing idea for an yeah. alien or monster, and then some of them I was like, that's, who cares, like, that's really bad. Did you read the one about, I can't remember, it's like a Lakers game? No, Here's no. One. That's a great one. That, I, I was like, that's actually a legitimately neat idea for, like, a horror story. Mm. Um, having to watch a basketball game? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For, you know, for anybody in the geek culture, that's a nightmare. Yeah. But it's, it's like this thing, like, every time you watch the video back, it gets a little different, and then the people in the video start taking notice of it. It's kind of like... I oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's kind of a... And it goes pretty dark, but, um... But then, yeah, some of it's, like, uh, just, like... All right, here's a pillow, and every time you sleep on it, you get eaten by a monster. Who knew? <laughs> the Fuck. Like, there were, like, two types of stories that I read, and the ones that were, like, genuinely eerie and creepy were ones that was, like, this is, like, a, a normal object, but it's different in a subtle way, and, like, it affects people in ways that you wouldn't understand. And then the, that was kind of cool. And then some of the other ones, it was just, like, this is an evil version of an everyday object. <laughs> yeah, like you said, like, this is a toaster, and the toaster causes you to kill yourself, so you become a toaster. <laughs> Absolutely. You should right? write that, yeah. <laughs> That's actually on there. I think I, I, oh. I hope the author of that page isn't listening, but that was one of my less favorite uh, articles that I read. I think you're too nice. I don't think that guy is going to be like, what a fucking jerk, I hate you, Northern <laughs> Lion. Downvote, downvote, downvote. Well, I'm just thinking from the perspective of someone who wrote a lot of user reviews on game FAQs when I was 14. If, if mm-hmm. I watched one of these episodes and somebody was like, I read this asshole's review of World Series Baseball 2K3 and it was bad, I'd be like, wow, fuck that guy. <laughs> did you ever uh, did you ever go to the Game Facts forums, by the way? Yeah, yeah, constantly when I was younger, at least. Do you do it now, where they ask all the sex shit? <laughs> Wait, what? really? Yeah, there's what, nice... What's the story here? There's a thread in something awful old games forum called gamers.txt, where they, like, copy-paste or, like, take screenshots of fucked-up shit that gamers say. And a lot of the Game Facts stuff is like, um... Of all the women in Final Fantasy, whose feet are the prettiest? <laughs> it's like, holy shit! Because the answer is obviously Tifa. Oh, but, yeah, um, naturally. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh, man, but, those polls of the day are getting weird. Or, yeah, it's like, which which Pokemon would you like to fuck? You know? And it's and then like people will talk like, I don't even know how you'd fuck Bellsprout. And it's like, oh, <laughs> all right, thanks. I mean, say what you will, but these are some pretty good icebreakers. <laughs> <laughs> that was actually the other agenda. That we were going to send you. Basically. Oh, man. We should... Oh, I, I guess I shouldn't reveal so it. So which should... Final Fantasy character's feet you want to fuck? Hmm? It's really weird <laughs> because I'm thinking, I'm thinking about the morphology, and Bellsprout seems like one of the most 
like logical, logically fuckable Pokemon. It's got like the <laughs> big gaping maw, and it doesn't appear to have any teeth. I mean, it seems <laughs> like the logical starting point, really. I mean, it's not like it's a Ditto or something. What do you do with that? You just kind of wrap it around. <laughs> I don't even. Which one's Ditto? Ditto's the one that can become anything. So I guess I'm full of shit because you could just have it become Bellsprout, the most fuckable Pokemon, if you wanted to. I was going to counter with Diglett, but maybe this is something I don't want to be engaged Oh, my God. In. What do you do with Diglett? You just, like, sit on the hole and wait for him to pop up? Well, yeah, you know, you have to be, you know, gender neutral in this whole fuckable Pokemon conversation. Well, in the first generation, there are only, like, two gendered Pokemon, right? Oh, that's true. Weird well, I mean, rat and other rat. It depends, I guess, on what you count. <laughs> you know, I mean, Pikachu, hey, you know. He pleases everybody, <laughs> yeah. as far as I understand it. Fan favorite. Absolutely. Probably would have won that poll if there was one. <laughs> Oh good God! Well, we've been we've been doing this for an hour, and I think fucking Pokemon is probably a good a good point we want to end on. If basically. you'd fuck Bellsprout, make sure to fracture that like button. You, let me tell you something here, Bell pal. Bellsprout is the <laughs> cutest fucking Pokemon, and my Bellsprout.wikia.com page will not be sullied by. You're that. gonna lock it down. <laughs> hey, my Bellsprout. Oh, just now. <laughs> Here I, I, I would personally like to thank this person, Northern Lion, who once started a Let's Play of Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, but had to abandon it every few episodes of Legal Issues. Let's play is no the Let's Play was notable in that it wasn't an indie game. Uh, sure. Legal Issues might be a little bit grandiose, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, did the, did the developer like reach out to you? Or? No, no, it was it was like a false copyright ID or content uh, ID match, which yeah, I don't know, it's the kind of thing that hits you before you're partnered. There are people who just like. Ah, uh, yeah. Troll for that, basically, to make some easy money. Yeah, that happens. Uh, that's happened to a couple people, I know. Yeah. That yeah. happened to me, actually, once with uh, yeah. a Dead to Rights video. Oh, and, um, okay. <laughs> so. Um, it's been my pleasure, yeah. No, yeah, thank you very much. It's been good to have you. Uh, think, well, thank um, you. Uh, I'll assume the thing you want to plug, besides yourself, is... Um, no, I'm kidding. Uh, Rock, <laughs> Rockley Smile, though, is... Yeah, uh, YouTube.com slash Rockley Smile. That's R-O-C-K-L-E-E Smile. Yep. Okay. Great. Yeah. Thanks a lot for being on. Uh, it, really it was awesome it. to be here. Yeah. Okay. Great. Cool. Well, maybe someday we'll have you back on, but but we're gonna be li living in a ditch soon. With this channel. <laughs> this channel's going down. It can't so. last. Let's be honest. No. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. No. The, the specter of our inevitable demise is hangs over all of us. This blip of our YouTube existence. More Podcast or less. is just a, an opiate to distract us from our inevitable deaths. So Nint Nintendo and Sega will be the heat death of the Let's Play universe, <laughs> more or less. But uh, all right, all right. We got some Pokemon to fuck. There exactly. you go. Before you go, fuck a bell sprout. All right, Please. later, folks. Bye -bye. Later.